Hello. In this project, Exploring Price Demand and Revenue Cost and Profit Graphs, I want to go through some of the uh, more intricate items of using GeoGebra to uh, get the computer to uh, make the graphs and the points and the labels and things like that. Sort of an introduction to GeoGebra, if you will, because uh, some of it can be a little uh, distressing if, if you're not very familiar with it. So I'm just going to go through some of the parts of the project. Um, so that you can see how it's done and then uh, you'll have to add in some stuff later. But I'm going to start on the uh, price demand function part. And the first part of this is to enter the price demand function. So it's going to be P of X is equal to 16 minus 0.02 X. When you do that, you press enter, you get the price demand function. But as you can see, there's nothing on the graph. Okay. And that's because the graph of this price demand function is actually outside the current window that we have. This is one of the harder things to do with GeoGebra and that's to set the window. So on your project you see that it says that you want to show ranges from about negative 150 to 1000. That's on the X's. So in order to get the X's to do that you want to get near the X axis with your mouse. You want to press shift and click and hold and you can see that the arrow changes to this sort of left right arrow. And then if you expand it to the right, you see that you're reducing the X's. If you expand it sort of to the left, actually, I guess I should say in and out uh, because it depends on what side of the axis you're on, right? So you're sort of just squeezing it in toward the center here. And ah, there you go. Now you can see some of the graph. And if you go any place away from the axis, click and hold, you sort of get control of the graph and you can sort of move it around. And man, it's pretty close, maybe right about there. So you can see we've got 150 on the negative side here and 1,000 on the, on the right side. Now for the Ys, it says the window should be about negative 6 to 20. We've got the negative 6, but we need the 20. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hover over the Y axis, press Shift, click and hold the left mouse button and pull that back toward the origin until we get about 20. And there you go. Now you can see the entirety of the price demand function. Now, uh, the next part is we want to know what the demand is when uh, we're selling 270 wine glasses. Now, GeoGebra works just the same way algebra works. You can tell it what the function name is and you can say of and then an x value. So in this case go into a cell over here on the left and type in p and then of is parentheses just like in algebra 270 close parentheses and press enter. It gives it a name of little a but we're not going to use that. We just wanted to know that the answer was 10.6 which is $10.60 per wine glass. And that's just information for you. Notice that nothing on the uh, graph changed. Now, part four says we can add in the point on the graph. And so to type in a point, you just type it in the same way that you would write it. A point has to start with a left parenthesis. And notice that GeoGebra went ahead and put up the right parenthesis, uh, parenthesis because it knows that we're going to have to end it at some point. The X value is 270. And then the Y value is whatever the Y value comes from being P of 270. Well, I'm not even going to bother to look at that because that might be rounded or whatever. I'm just going to go ahead and type in P of 270 and let GeoGebra do the computation for me. And there you can see that it's marked this with an A. It automatically labels things where the, uh, if it's set up to do that. And sometimes the labels are good and sometimes they're bad, you know, uh, whatever. But that's the point on the price demand curve that represents a demand of 270 uh, wine glasses, each for $10.60. Right, right there. Uh, next, we want to add the text that shows me the value of this uh, wine glass. So I'm going to go to this menu here, it's the slider, it says A equals 2 and a little slider under it. That's where the text menu is. So I'm going to click on that and then select text. And I'm going to go over here near that point 
and click in, uh, click the right uh, click the left mouse button. And I'm going to type ten dollars and sixty cents, and just press enter, and there it is. And then you can change the formatting of this. We want to change the color, uh, things like that. So I'm going to select that, and then I'm going to right click and do settings. And I can change the color. I'll change the color to the same orange color. Oh, I must be on background. So let's select foreground. Change that to orange. Background. We can say no background, or you can give it a white background. And that'll mark out the grid. And then for text, uh, maybe I want that a little bit bigger. So I can say medium. And maybe I want it bold, something like that. And then I click the X to get out of that. Now it's covering up my graph a little bit, so I'm going to move it out of the way. Just click, hold, and drag it to another spot. And then you can do the same thing for your title here. I'm going to select text, click up here, sort of top and center, and we'll do price demand for wine glasses at Mr. Ray's Wine Emporium. Let's see how that looks. All right, it's a little bit uh, small. And so now it's it's got this menu over here as well. So I can do some things here. So I can say, set it to bold. Uh, let me click on it, oops. Click the pointer, click on that so it's highlighted, then click bold. And I can make it bigger, maybe large. Now it's a little bit off center, so I can drag and move it over. Maybe I like that background again. So let's choose the background to be white, like so. And there were some other tasks that you needed to do in, in this project. I'm not gonna go over those. Uh, it was add a couple of points really is basically what it is. Let's move now to the save and uh, export functions. So up here under the hamburger menu, the the triple lines. You can save it right here. And I've already created an account, so you might want to create an account uh, before you get started. So I'll just say Wine Emporium Price Demand. And then I'm going to make mine private. Uh, yours can be whatever. And then I'm going to save it like so. And then part of this project is for you to export this graph into a Word document. So we're going to go to the hamburger menu, triple bar there, and export image. Puts up a little image here. And then if you're on a Windows, you can do right click and copy the image and then go into Word and then just do a paste, right? Control V. Resize it and everything, but usually it comes out pretty good. If you want to save a copy of this as a, I think it's a PNG. You can just hit download. Yeah, and there it is. It'll save it down here in your downloads folder for later. I've started a new GeoGebra graph so that I can show you some of the things with the revenue functions. So the first thing I would do is go ahead and type in the price demand function from before. Always remember to use the function names, P of X, R of X, etc. That way GeoGebra knows what function that it you want to use later on. Now the revenue function, we know that this is equal to R of X is equal to X times p of x. For times, I'm going to press the asterisk, and you'll notice that it automatically changes it to the little center dot that represents multiplication. That's perfectly fine. And then there it is. Now, it didn't simplify it like we do in algebra or in, in business calc. That's fine. GeoGebra is doing its own thing, but you know on a, on a homework or something to simplify that. I'm going to go ahead and type in the cost function from the 
a word problem. C of X is equal to 1200 plus 3.6 X. And then for profit, I'm going to go ahead and call this PR of X. When you label functions in GeoGebra, you can actually use full names. You don't have to use a single letter like we normally do in, in algebra. And the reason I want to use PR instead of P is because I've already used P. And GeoGebra might take into account the fact that one is lowercase and the other is uppercase. But I don't want to risk it, so I'm just going to call it PR of X. And I'm going to give it the formula that we use in class. It's R of X minus C of X. Again, it didn't quite simplify it the way that we normally would, but it still did find it. Now, you're looking at the graph and you're saying, well, there's nothing there. Well, it's a window problem again. So let's go ahead and reset the window back to uh, something that we had earlier. And let's see if that's going to work for us. You're seeing all these functions sort of come into play here. Squeeze it over here. Maybe that's too much. So I can expand it out like that. The Y's are definitely bad. In this graph, we only want the revenue, the cost, and the profit. And the purple graph, you can see over here, purple, purple, is the price demand function. I don't really want the price demand function on this one because it's usually not to the same scaling as the other three functions. So I'm going to turn it off by clicking on that circle right there. And I still need more of this, and there we go. So that's basically it. Um, we do have a little bit of a problem down here. Let me get rid of this. The profit function goes negative, and it goes down to here. And I just got to make sure I'm getting all of the stuff that I need. So maybe that's probably close enough. You'll need to evaluate whether or not you're seeing enough on the graph or not. And I would definitely change this revenue function from gray. I don't know why it thought that that was a good idea. Uh, let's change that. Let's change that to settings, color. Uh, I can't use green because that's already taken, but maybe this, uh, maybe this purple here would look nice. Yeah, there we go. And that's the highlighted purple. When you click off of it, it'll be regular purple. All right, so there we have that. And uh, some other things that you want to do, you want to find the intersection point for the revenue and the cost to determine the break-even point. So click on the point menu and intersect, and then just click on revenue function graph and the cost graph, and there it is. And those two points are highlighted. Um, we want to change those then to reflect the value instead of just this random label of A. So I'm gonna go back to the pointer and I'm gonna right click on the point. I'm gonna go to settings and the settings come up over here and by the show label, I'm gonna change that to the value of the label. The value of a label of a point is, is just the coordinates of the point themselves. And then it's kind of covered up by some some stuff so I can move you can move it a little bit you can't get too far away from the point but you can move it a little bit over and so there's that uh, break-even point you do the same thing over here and then uh, basically the rest of it is adding in some text um, for the the rest of your project so that's the idea behind GeoGebra uh, there's a lot of help for GeoGebra on the GeoGebra website, so if you get stuck on something, you can always look up something there. You can always look in some of these menus here if you're, if you're missing something. We didn't use a whole lot of these functions. A lot of them are geometric, and we don't use those, but we do use the algebra ones like midpoint and roots and text and sliders and things like that. All right, so good luck on your project, uh, and... Uh, if you, uh, if you need some extra help, of course, you can always email me or search for some things online or whatever. Uh, have fun uh, working with this. Uh, be sure to be thinking about all of the things that are going on. Uh, the project is more than just, here, I need you to do these graphs for me. It's supposed to be instructive and didactic, right? You are engaging with the graphs. You're seeing how they change, how the curves work with each other. 
things like that. Plus also we'll be doing more of these GeoGebra projects in the future. So you want to get a good grasp on the mechanics of GeoGebra early on in the semester. All right. Thanks for watching.